and perverts it. To take our intimacy and put it into a situation where it's wrong. Okay? So I want to say this on the onset. The, the majority, and I work with hundreds of people, the majority of the sexual struggles I see with people is intimacy that has been perverted. They just started just wanting to be held, to be known for, to feel special. Right? They started there. And so the enemy knows that. And so the fight and the struggle, in which we will talk about in subsequent classes, is to reprioritize my intimacy. I want to say that first. Hmm. First, Thessal First Thessalonians 4 and 3, I can't talk today, says, for this is the will of God, even your sanctification, that you should abstain from fornication, next scripture, next verse, I mean, that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and in honor, next verse, not in the lust of concupiscence, even as the Gentiles, which know not God. I'm going to read it and amplify it. It's going to help you make, help it make more sense. For this is the will of God, that you be sanctified, separated, and set apart from sin, that you abstain and back away from sexual immorality. That each of you know how to control his own body, in holiness and honor, being available for God's purpose and separated from things profane, not to be used in lustful passion like the Gentiles who do not know God and are ignorant of his will. So that word concupiscence means lustful passion. So it is our Christian responsibility he uses the word here twice to sanctify our passions. It is our responsibility to set our intimacy aside to be used for the purpose of God. That's number one. The word sanctification means to be set apart. So what we're talking about today, ladies and gentlemen, because preachers throw these together, I'm not talking about salvation. I'm talking about the next step after salvation, which is called sanctification. Sexual immorality and impurity is all about sanctification. Write this passage of scripture down. Pastor, what happened? Primarily to most people, not all people, but most people. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, and verse 4. Oh, I just felt my help. I like when he rests on me. I get nervous if I don't feel him. That means sit down somewhere. Song of Solomon, chapter 4, chapter 8, verse 4. Mm. It says, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that you stir not up, nor awake my love, until he pleases. Another translation says, do not awaken passion before it's time. Amen. The problem with, with, with most of us, not all of us, because there are people who are virgins, who are abstaining from sex, is that our passion had a time, and that time was called marriage. But whether, it's through, whether it was through our fault or the fault of somebody else, that passion got awakened before his time. It is not always in control. Y'all know my story. I was molested. 
So I did not awaken that passion. That passion was awakened through abuse. The moment we awaken passion, passion does not know that it is not marriage. So everything that is biologically built to turn on, turns on the moment we enter into sexual passion. And it is not a clock that you can turn off. So let me say this. That's a phone? Oh. So, so, let me, thought somebody was outside. so let me say this. Nobody in this church, including the pastor, nobody will ever be outside of the scope of being tempted sexually. You can always say no. But if you are a human being, that temptation will always come to your life. Always. You don't outgrow it. Remember Jesus said, if you look lustfully upon a woman, you've already committed adultery. So sexual temptations and immorality does not start with the behavior. It starts in the mind. And so we will always get the thought, possibly by looking at a magazine, looking at a television show, looking at somebody walking by. The presentation was all, always going to be there. Doesn't mean that you have to receive it. If your love has been awakened before its time, you now have the platform to easily receive those transmissions that are coming your way sexually. These attacks, ladies and gentlemen, are not natural. They are supernatural. These are spiritual attacks that attack our natural emotions. I'm going to give you five things before I leave. Not right now, but I'm going to give you five steps that you can do to address this issue. But I'm giving you background and context a little bit to understand what's happening. A spiritual entity takes advantage of your natural emotion and the fact that that natural emotion got awakened out of context and out of time. I'm a firm believer of recommitting your body back to the Lord. I'm a firm believer in that. All right? So I think like yes. So to, to, to put that practically, I literally went to the Lord, and this is Psalm 51, which I'm going to talk about in a second. Went to the Lord, asked the Lord for forgiveness. And really, uh, Anisu, this is my personal prescription, not yours. If God don't lead you this way, I was trying to contact people that I think that I had did wrong bisexually to ask for forgiveness, whether they said yes or no. So repent, turn away from what I did. Repent before the Lord. Ask the Lord for forgiveness. So he has to forgive me. He's faithful and just to forgive me of all, of all unrighteousness. And then um, the next steps are the five steps I'm going to give you in the plan. But those are the first two. Those are the first two things. So I'm going to give you the rest of those in the plan. All right. Trying to say what to give y'all in the time I got. Write this down. There is nothing wrong with sex. Sex only becomes dangerous out of context. What do you mean by that? I'm, I'm explaining. Great question. The act of sex was created by God. But it was only meant to be within the context of a union. When I get into the teaching, I'm going to teach on soul ties. Soul ties aren't bad. 
It's the type of soul tie you have. If your marriage is going to be effective, it must be a soul tie. Must be. Must be. My soul must be tied to Pastor T. Or I'll be waking up every day wondering where she at. All right. There is a strong link between sexual immorality and premature death. When I get into the class, I'm going to explain more why. Sexual immorality is the widest gate that is opened into a person's life that allows other spiritual entities to antagonize us. If the devil really wants to wreak havoc in your life, he's not particularly concerned about you lying, nor particularly concerned about you stealing, and all of those are wrong. But he will create a space for sexual immorality. Sexual immorality opens the gate for all of the other spirits to come through. When I get into class, I don't have time, I'll tell you why. You want to be spiritually sick have a sexually immoral life. Those two things just go hand in hand. So, if the devil wants to kill you, the fastest way he can get you to do it, outside of number one, suicide, is to create a sexually immoral life. I'm not just talking about having sex out of wedlock. Pornography. The things I mentioned, bestiality, homosexuality, Opens the door to kill you quickly. Quickly. Yes, you sure can. So you say pornography. Pornography. That's why we're in here. Go ahead, you can ask it. So if you and your husband are in y'all's wedding or y'all's marriage circle and y'all are the point of each other's affection, that's undefiled. There's nothing wrong with that. It's when you bring another personhood, personality, person into that atmosphere, it becomes, becomes unsacred. It becomes unholy. I got pictures of Pastor T on Secure in my folder that are censored. But that's my wife. Amen. That's not pornography. Yes, ma'am. Um, talking about soul ties and um, soul ties and molestation. Yes. Uh, yeah, absolutely, especially if they groomed you. Especially if they groomed you. So what I mean by grooming is they prepped you to take advantage of you. Absolutely. I've seen. I've seen, I watched the eighteen-year-old marry a sixty-four-year-old preacher. He groomed her since she was fifteen, and she's in love with him. Yeah, you can. You can pick up the character of people without soul ties. Um, just to, just through the law of familiarity, if I'm around you long enough, I'll pick up some of your characteristics. But 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 what we mean by soul ties, so let's just jump back, and I won't go get into this teaching. But say, I mean, let me get into a little bit of it, and I'm going to jump back out, because I'm going to teach on soul ties. When we say soul, mind, will, imagination, mind, will, imagination, emotions, and intellect. So when we say soul ties, those five areas of my my life are connected with your life. That's what we mean. So it could come through uh, somebody being molested, right? Somebody could be molested and not have a soul tie with the perpetrator. That's a, yeah, that, that, that's a possibility. But soul ties need to have an atmosphere to grow. It's not something that happens overnight. 
They need to have an atmosphere to grow. So the first place soul ties, dang, Anisu. I'm sorry. The first place. <laughs> you did, though. That's why I need it. Okay, that's why I'm going to spend a minute or two here. The first place, people think the first place soul ties start is sex. It's not true. The first place soul ties start, sex is a consequence. Right? So it starts there. So if my mind gets tied to another individual, right, other things follow, like my imagination. So now I think about them. Even, even though this is a wrong relationship, my imagination is connected to them. Right? My emotions are connected to them. That's a soul tie. And so there has to be an atmosphere for that to happen. And I will be honest with you. Sisters, y'all cold, but brothers are good at this. Especially narcissists. They tie you up. They get your emotions involved. You can't go through the day without thinking about them. And like a tarantula, they sink their paws into you. And now they actually literally control your thoughts. I'm not talking about being a psychic, but I mean that you can't think on the stuff that you're supposed to so because you're so worried about them. It's a soul tie. So, Last question on soul tie. Move on. No, no, don't be sorry. I'm trying to figure out. Okay. So let me just go ahead and say this. Yes. Everybody. You know, I'm yeah. Not just want y'all to be okay and know I'm okay. Yeah. I ain't yeah. sex since the summer. Okay? Hallelujah. Work. Sex. Work. Like that, Amen. Right? Ain't yeah. So I'm working this thing out, and as a matter of fact, I'm doing really good. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. But you ever like, um, like have sex with somebody you really don't even want to have sex with? Oh yeah. Mm. But like you, it's like I, I can't explain. It's like I really don't want to, but I, but I'm, I'm going to. I'm just, I don't even know why I'm doing this. Yeah. Yeah. No, not, not really. Yeah. <laughs> not, not really it's just horny. Yeah. What is that about? Yeah. So in, in, in order to have a sex with anybody, unless it's forced, mm -hmm. and I see your hand, Tish, in order to have sex with anybody, unless it's forced, one, one and when we're talking about soul ties, all five of those areas got to be connected to another human being, mm -hmm. okay? But to have sex with anybody, unless it's forced, mm -hmm. or unless you're going to get paid, mm -hmm. one of those five areas has to, has to make a connection to the other person. Right, so mind, will, imagination, emotions, and intellect. So I just make up a general example, and I've did this before. I just want to know what it's like. I don't care nothing about you. You really don't look that good. I just, I just imagine what it's like. I'm just being honest. I thought we were here to be honest. Okay, well we made a connection right there, and so we did it. But there wasn't nothing after that. You know, it ain't gonna be nothing after that. But you got to have one of those five components there but those are instigating moments those are what Taylor Altman called seemingly innocent small acts of behavior that set you up for a soul tie with that person or another person it can start it can start leading to one that may not be a soul tie but all you got to do is get let me just tell on me all you got to do is get used to doing that a little bit They're like it's just casual but I'm prepped for a good soul tie. And so the devil knows. So he got Sister, so Sister Sue waiting. And as soon as, I'm, as soon as this is normal for me, the soul tie is going to be easy. It's going to be easy. Oh, no. Go ahead, Tish. You had your hand up. Okay, so when you say the bedroom is undefiled. Yeah, right. That goes with all sex also? So I... So I, so I <laughs> so for Trees House it does. Uh, let me let me let me let me say this. Let me say this without going too far into somebody's bedroom. Cause l let me be honest, I don't have no problem with it. Right. I I think it's not. But let me say this. What's done in your bedroom? Because I think I think we think when we have sex. I think we think we leave God out. So, what, I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. Because you're my wife and the bed is undefiled, and I'm going to get into that word undefiled because it's not what we meant. You can have an unholy sexual experience with your, with your spouse. That don't mean I can just jug anything up you, put anything on you. 
without your consent and without it being enjoyable to you, right? So if that thing is consensual, because your, your coming together is supposed to be a process of bringing glory to your relationship. Yeah. 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 But you can't say that for every situation. Because somebody actually performing that act may be hurtful to her. So, no, pastor said, oh, sex good for everybody. No, I said, Pastor Butler said. All right. That probably wouldn't be your person then, right? Huh? Yeah, and, and I think there is a level of, of sacrifice in your relationship. You might not like, because, you know, Pat T like stuff I don't like. I like stuff Pat T don't like. But we, but we communicate. Okay, we finna do this. Now, you know this one for me. Okay, okay. <laughs> you know, but we in agreement. How can come, two come together unless they be agreed? agreed? Right, but all of this stuff, you my wife and you my husband, so I can just jug this up you and the devil can be in your bed. All right, moving on. It's a great question. Um, single people, because I'm mostly talking to single people, but not all single people, because I know some married people who struggle sexually. Remember I said this is spiritual. The attack against you is spiritual. So having a consecrated life is important because spiritual entities will lie dormant in your life until opportune times to strike. I have seen people, the only reason they got married, the only reason they got married was to have sex. Let me tell you how to let me tell you how the enemy played a trick on them. They were horny as all outdoors. As soon as they got married, that desire left. It stopped cold turkey. He don't know why he can't get aroused no more with her. It was spiritual. So what you do with that well, ain't just, it, there's not just one thing that you do with it. But let me say this. But let me say something about this. What God has put together, let no man put asunder. Some of the stuff God didn't put together, and that's why it's going asunder. All right, ask your question. Okay, praise the Lord. Right. So that's the first time, that's the first thing I ask people when they talk about marriage counseling. Pastor, marry me, and I got the wedding plan, they got the cake and all that, and that's the first thing I, are y'all supposed to be together? Well, how you know? Because uh, I love him. Well, how you know you love him? Because when you're around, I feel something. Baby, the moment them bills is due, that feeling is going to flee. All right. That feeling is going to flee. It's hard to make love with a cut-off cut -off notice on the dresser. All right. Let me give you these five steps. I'm going to go into I Listen, church, I don't have time to go into the five steps because somebody's going to push me to do it. I'm going to do that when I do the full class. I'm just giving you the steps now, what, what, what I have, Treese, okay? So I'm going to go into the steps in detail later, Treese. All right. <laughs> five steps. To address, address sexual immorality, whether it's, forni whether it's fornication, whether it's pornography, homosexuality, it doesn't matter. All right. Number one, and none of these steps are new to anybody, but I promise you if you start working them, they will start working for you. Number one, I must admit that this is a struggle. Yes, it does. I must admit that I like stuff I'm not supposed to like. I was helping a guy. He says, Pastor, I'm, I'm not supposed to. I'm, 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 I'm homose homosexual. I'm not supposed to be. I know I'm not supposed to be. But the way that it just feels. And I said, 
uh, homosexuality, uh, pornography, any sin, lying, cheating, none of it's different to me. All of us have one responsibility. If Jesus said the way to be saved is to walk around here on your head, we all have to do it. So the question is, if I know what I'm supposed to do, am I willing to surrender? Regardless of what my feelings, my thoughts, my emotions, my mother, my father, my culture, my neighborhood, my community has promoted as safe. And some of us have problems that weren't created by us. I grew up with pimps and hustlers. I was told to slap them upside their head and see how high they'll jump. That's how I was trained. I said that's how I was trained. My wife, my wife from the projects too. Because I started all that talk, and she was like, who you talking to? Right. You be scared to go to sleep. <laughs> and I said, whoa, this ain't how I was supposed to go. When I was on the streets, they was jumping. <laughs> she ain't jumping. Right. right? So number one, admit my struggles. This is Psalm 51. Please, please read this psalm in its entirety, because one of the steps is for you to go be with God. So this is one of the scriptures I want you to read. Psalm 51. This is David's psalm after he has slept with Bathsheba and killed Uriah. I am not admitting just to feel guilty. I am not admitting just to appease my conscience. I'm admitting because the only way, the only way that you will ever get delivered from this struggle is brokenness. The only way. The only way. Brokenness. And you only, God. That's exactly right. Broke. I got to admit that I got a problem. But a problem God can fix. So I cannot come to God like this is not a struggle half-heartedly. Oh, God, I'm going to be okay. No, God, I'm sick. So I came to him. Sick. Some of it my fault, some of it not. So that's why y'all hear me say this all the time. I ain't just saying that to say I'm saying this out of a, pers a, a personal place. God started telling me, he's like, man, you need to grow up and be a man. And God kept telling me this in all my situations. He said, I know it's not your fault, but it is your responsibility now. Yeah. It, just seems so unfair. it does. But the glory that comes out of taking responsibility is like nothing, it's like nothing you can ever imagine you can then stand up before people and help walk them out of this stuff yeah. number one admit my struggle so I can bring my heart into a place of brokenness you probably will cry for days if you're really broken yes, all of the women I hurt all, and, and when I think about this to this day like it's still it's, I know I'm forgiven it still breaks my heart because I just I just didn't know like, I just didn't know, and I just asked God, you know, please don't let these women be scarred from being married. Like, I used to sell fake drugs, and I, I, used, I used to ask, ask the Lord, he told me to stop asking him, he forgiven me. Please don't let anybody try to smoke that and die that I didn't know about. But I truly was repenting and, and, and admitted it. it was an issue. I had did it, number one. Number two, number two, please, if this is your struggle, you have to go on a retreat and, be, and go before God. You have to separate yourself from your current life to go be with God. The devil will create a climate of distraction, of busyness. It'll look like a blessing. All of a sudden, Yolanda will get clients out of the wazoo if the devil knows she's going on a retreat. But you got to grab that calendar and say, I know I got to be here. I know I'm going to make this money. But for these next 48 hours, I got to go. I got to go flock this out with God. I got to go on a retreat to get instructions, which I'm going to talk about in a second on how to deal with this. Pastor, how do I know my retreat is over? When you have an answer. If you don't have an answer from God, you ain't off your retreat. And listen, this is not a retreat. You go take some time off. But you watch Netflix starting off, like, I'm just going to watch 20 minutes. And then you do a little prayer, then you're on Facebook. No, 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 no. you playing with your destiny. you playing with your destiny. You put that joker on airplane mode. you flipping on every nine minutes to check your messages, make sure it's not an emergency, and you go sit with God. These kind come not out. 
but by prayer and fasting. Some of this stuff has happened to us for years and years and years. It's layers of this stuff. We got to go get instruction from God. Number three. Do you have to go out No, you can be in your house. Okay. Yeah, you can be in your house as long as it's just you and God. Okay. Absolutely. I just be saying go out because there's five people in my house, six including the dog, and somebody always there. But yeah, you can do this at your house. Number three. Number three. If you have a sexual struggle, behavioral struggle, and you have not been able to get help by yourself, it is time to get help with somebody else. It is time to reach out to somebody who has what I call a faithful spirit. There are, what, there are people that the book of Psalms call tail bearers. I'm not talking about them. Not talking about people who are going to spread your business. Or talking about, girl, I ain't going to tell nobody. And be like, guess what, girl? No, no, don't, don't tell nobody. But I was talking to not them. This may even be professional help. But I encourage you, if they are professional, they need to be a believer too. Because some of these recommendations and all that type of stuff would jack you up by these unsaved people. Some of the Christians, too. There need to be somebody who's led by the Spirit of God. Preferably, it's not all situations, somebody who's had these similar experiences. If you haven't, if you can't do it by yourself, please don't keep trying to do it by yourself. You're burying your future. It's just a matter of time. If the enemy is smart enough to know, he fights you. And then you get cleaned by the Holy Ghost. And he say, I can't whoop Pastor Butler by myself. I'm going to get seven spirits more wicked than myself. If he's smart enough to go get help. The Bible says there's safety in a multitude of counselors. Go get you some help. Somebody you can say, listen, shut up, hush. I'm broken and this is my struggle. And I'm only telling you because God led me to you to get some help. And I need you to hold my hand till I come out this thing. Amen. Even AA smart enough to know to get sponsors. Right. Getting this help, remember, the number one partner in your help is the Holy Ghost. Amen. He is the perfect counselor. Do not seek counsel with any human being concerning this struggle until you've sought counsel with the Holy Ghost. That's part of your retreat. He's waiting to talk to you. Yes. Number one, admit my struggle from a place of brokenness. Number two, go on a retreat. Number three, get help. Number four is the most ignored rule. And when people come back to me and tell me why they're falling, and we usually can go back to step number four. Step number four is probably the most important one outside of partnering with the Holy Spirit. If I have a sexual or behavioral struggle, number four, I must create boundaries and rules for my life. I haven't smoked weed since I was 22, 21, about 20 years ago. But I'm smart enough to know that weed still smells good. So why would I put myself in a situation where they're smoking weed? I have single acquaintances, but I don't have single friends. I don't need nobody asking me what I'm doing because they ain't doing nothing. Because they ain't got no responsibility. Well, she ain't going to let you out the house? Dude told me one time, say, Pastor Bella, I ain't know you was whipped. I said, what? I said, you just not finding me that? I ain't doing a good job. Whipped all the way. All the way around. She said, go, I take off. And I'm going to be happily married. 
rules around your life, guidelines and boundaries. You know you can't hear the sound of her voice. Why are you still holding that phone up in your phone? They can go to the club. You can't. They can drink. You can't. Because you know when you get drunk, your alter ego. Uh-oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost. If y'all give me some gin and tonic, the old me that's been buried for 20 years will come out. Speaking in tongues. You're not a big boy. You're not a big girl. You're not. Don't play with your passion. Don't play with it. It'll, it'll take you over. You are a passionate person by nature. The devil knows that. That's why he wants you. He don't deal with drabs and dud heads. But he like you because you're a peacock. You flood your stuff. You love deeply and intently. You love passionately. You loyal to the core. That's why he needs you. He would have promoted you right to the top. The influence that you just have in the community, the devil love to have you. I'm gonna tell you how the influence work. If Michael Jackson would have got on the stage one time and just said Jesus is Lord, he would have converted more people than the Pope. He understands that about you too. You create rules and boundaries in your life. And listen, I ain't saying be no nun because I have fun in my Christian walk. But you got to have a fence around yourself. Jesus, be a fence all around me. Because you can put them those, those desires and affections to sleep, but they will be dormant. Sexual immorality, I said this before, it needs the right atmosphere. It's hard to make love to Kirk Franklin. But you get the right atmosphere. So you just keep the right atmosphere. Y'all going to think I'm crazy. But if you see me at Walmart, you ought to see me do it. I got these big headphones, D. Bluetooth. Jabras. I go to Walmart, I have my headphones on. Pajamas on with headphones on. If you holler at me, you really want me. That means you don't interrupted the prayer, the instrumentals, and you don't brought me out the spirit. Could I walk in Walmart and be okay? I do it all the time. But I'm always remembering, inside of this man is a little boy that under the right conditions... I don't play rules. That's right. Me and my wife in the house by 10. Where you at? Amen. Amen. Talk on the phone every day. Every day. Every rules. I get up here and say this to you. I'm just using my personal life. Get up to say, if y'all flirt with me, I'm going to tell the church. Amen. I'm going to get up here and tell it. Well, ain't no sense us playing the games. Oh, Pastor, you show you show cute what you got on. No, you want to say I'm cute. Right. They just end this right here. Right, man. I don't need no ring. If 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 I got one, but I don't wear it. Because if you came up on me, I done did something wrong. Right. There's something about me that should say taken. Uh, is that true though? Me, I said me. Okay. Me, I'm talking about me. I ain't talking about everybody. Okay. Me. Okay. If I look like I want you. Something's went wrong. I said, if I look like, I'm telling you, if when I'm talking to you, you say, man, Pastor Shaw sure look like he wanted some. If that happens, I'm telling you something's wrong with me. Y'all are ran into preachers like that before you. He's, 
He talking about praying. And he P-R-E-Y. Praying. I'm telling you. That's the God I have around my life. That's different. That's different. Single, when a marriage and they, the um, devil know that you're fighting or against your partner, yeah. every and anybody going to come Oh, out yes, Lord. You're the, the best ace since sliced bread. Yay. It's a, it's, a vul- it's a place of vulnerability. Yeah. But let me tell you something. Who all in here married? Are you married or you get ready to be married? You get into it with your spouse. Let me tell you, this ain't marriage class. But when we get into marriage class, I say this. Your spouse, if that happens and y'all get into it, immediately. Immediately, if you're not around them, call them and say something nice to them. Call them and tell, call them and appreciate them. And if something happens and y'all argue, you pick up the phone and just say, "Baby, you might be gritting your teeth, baby. I just want to say, you know, I do anything for you. Have a good day. Do anything for you. <laughs> I'm trying to tell you how to keep it together. Don't walk around." You know, I'm just telling you, I'm telling you how to kill it for the devil walk through the door. Because he's coming. But you give him that phone. Baby, I love you. Love you. I love you. Close the door. Yes, sir. No, never. That's what the Bible say. Yeah, that's when he go in the workshop and conjure up how to get you in the morning. All right, number five, because I'm out of time. So number one. Admit your struggle. Come from a place of brokenness. Number two, go on a retreat. You and the Holy Ghost. Number three, get help if you need it. Four, create boundaries and rules. Number five, number one, two, three, and four, don't work unless the Holy Ghost just do it for you. Unless you do number five. Number one, two, three, and four are going to fall apart. It's just a matter of time unless you don't do number five. And this is why I'm a big proponent of church. This is why I love church. When I say church, I mean us coming together as a body. Number five, you must have accountability and corporate accountability and corporate examples. In other words, I need to be around somebody who's winning at this thing. I need to be around people who have the answer to my question. I know you love your cousin them. But in this season of your life, you don't need to be hanging over there. I don't care if you go to a self-help group, you come to church, you go around your, your godparents, you need to make sure that's in your life, especially if this, se- if this sexual and behavioral struggle has caused you something. What I mean by that, you know when it's causing you something because you, you now enjoy it. You enjoy it. And, and that's one of the things, number one, you got to be honest about God. I like it. All right? Got to be around people who are winning at this thing. The quickest way to lose a foothold in this race is to let the devil get you in isolation. That's why you got to find somebody with a faithful spirit, and that's why you can't be prideful. I struggle with people who are prideful. I, well, Pastor, I got it. You know, I mean, you know, everybody got a little something, you know, but I ain't, you know. And then you call me one-on-one, and you can lose your marriage because you can't keep your, your pants zipped up. Because everybody cute. No. No. All right. Number one, admit your struggle. Number two, go on a retreat. Number three, get help. Number four, create boundaries and rules. Number five, accountability and being around somebody who is a corporate example. All right. Y'all can stand to your feet. I will go over these more in details when I do the workshop. It's going to be three hours. And it's not going to be for the faint of heart. It's not going to be for under 18. Oh, praise the Lord. Trees, you did good. And you real good. Praise the <laughs> Amen. Listen, sexual struggles are real. 
I've done the research. Statistics show 51% of men, not in church, the number is high in church, in leadership, 51% of them struggle with pornography and adultery. 51% of the people who are up here preaching the word of God, when they leave here, they're going in front of their computer. I shared with y'all a YouTube clip I saw the man sitting in the pulpit right here. Had people, the armor bearer was behind him. He got his iPad out like he's getting ready to preach his sermon because he was up next to preach. And the armor bearer got his phone videotaping him. He watching porn on the iPad. It's on YouTube. When you can live that comfortably. And guess what? He'll get up in the anointing to fall just because God loved Deke so much that he want to help him. Let me pray for you. Unless somebody have any specific prayers, I want to pray generally for you, then I'm going to let y'all go. Thank y'all so much for your time. I know it was a lot. Y'all been here a long time. Thank y'all so much. Hopefully, uh, some of the information has been helpful. Um, anybody got anything specific they want me to pray for? Yeah, I have a friend that's, uh, her daughter is really going through mental, really 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 bad. She had uh, just said she wanted to kill herself, so she is in the mental hospital. Okay. Is she in Shreveport? Yeah, that's the spirit of death around here. so strong. Yeah, it's Attacking our young people. Mm -hmm. mm. I'll ask for prayer specifically, Pastor, because sexual sin has been a generational yeah. thing in my family. Same with mine. And, you know, before I got married, I was able to cut it. Yeah. And so, for me, I thought the attack on my kids would have been the drugs and the alcohol. Yeah. But it came on the sexual side. Gotcha. The homosexual side. Right, right. And so, um, just a prayer mm -hmm. for, you know, that I continue to press in for my kids that struggle with the sexuality. Amen. We believe in God for the power of God to break that generational curse. Like That's in my family, too. Was that the one you took a picture of? Okay. 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 Yeah. Amen. By the way, people with strong sexual appetites make great evangelists and prophets. She good. She great. Make great evangelists and prophets. All right. Yes, ma'am. Pray for me and uh pray for Dayton. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else? Amen. If y'all can just join hands, I promise I'm not going to pray long. God knows our needs. We just lift up those names so that we can call them out just like Jesus called Lazarus by name out of the grave. Father, we thank you tonight, oh God. It's such a serious subject, God. I thank you that we're able to share it in a lighthearted manner. But God, we need your help. We need your strength. We need your deliverance. We wouldn't be here if we didn't want to do right. If we didn't want to change God, we would be at home ignoring our issues, ignoring our struggles. But we come before the mercy seat of Christ tonight. We come before the throne where the blood is dripping from the altar. I pray that that blood is dripping upon each and every person tonight in the name of Jesus. God, you are destroying generational curses. God, you are realigning our passions and our desires. I thank you by the power of the Holy Spirit, oh God, that you are even helping us in traumas where we've been victimized and those victimizations have turned into private perversions, oh God. There's nothing too hard for you. Your arm is not too short to save. I pray in the name of Jesus, God, as uh, these individuals begin to put these principles into practice, even on their time away with you, that the Spirit of God will be clear in his instructions. That, God, you would give them wisdom to create a fence around their lives, letting the right people in and keeping the wrong people out. In the name of Jesus. Help us, Lord God, to deal with our thought life, for it starts there, O oh God. In the name of Jesus.
God, give us wisdom to walk our lives out, Lord God, with integrity. Teach us how to consecrate and, and sanctify our lives to be meet for the master's use. The devil will not gain victory nor foothold in our lives through these struggles, oh God. Your grace is sufficient for each and every one of us tonight. And we give you praise and we give you glory. The person's hand that we're holding on to tonight, Lord God, we join our faith with their faith. And we get an agreement for their freedom tonight. For what the spirit of the Lord is. There is liberty. One can put a thousand to flight. Two can put ten thousand to flight. So tonight we put those spiritual attacks and entities on notice. Clear our conscience from all dead works. We want to experience freedom indeed. Thank you that these strongholds will not prevent us from our purpose and they don't have a place in our 2023. So thank you, Holy Spirit, for going ahead of us and making the crooked path straight, oh God. I thank you for some of us who are here tonight, God, that you are even uh, helping us to, to consecrate our bodies once again, giving us a new start with our bodies, oh God. Even as we walk into the place of repentance, you will give us renewed bodies for our, for our mates, oh God. For those of us who are married, you will give us renewed bodies for our spouse in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you for the young lady tonight, God, who is contemplating suicide. We know that that is a spirit. We counsel the assignment of that spirit over her life in the name of Jesus. And we decree and declare John 10 and 10. You have come to give us life and to and give us life more abundantly. I decree and declare Philippians 2 and 5. The mind of Christ over her life tonight. She will not apply a permanent solution to a temporary problem. Let the light of God's favor shine upon her path. In the name of Jesus. Thank you for each and every situation. The prayer request that's been made known to today, oh God, over each and every one of our families, even as we're here, you're covering our families and our children, Lord God, because we can't be everywhere at all times. We need you to watch over. We need you to watch over. Thank you for breaking generational curses and walking us into generational blessings. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, somebody give God a hand of praise tonight. <laughs>